Hey everybody, Chef Marty Mangiello again here at the Presidential Culinary Museum. And today we're gonna to take a look at Betty Ford, um, one of my favorites on Inside the President's Cabinet. You know, Betty Ford is one of my favorites um, in today's day and age with Time's Up and many things that I have supported financially as well as my wife. She is extremely outspoken and you can see her here smiling with her husband Jerry and their dog. But also um, we have a wonderful thank you letter from President Ford that he sent to me uh, when I retired. Uh, Martin, excuse me, but I think somebody may have put a cigarette butt into an angel's hands out in the dining room as a joke. I think maybe a guest did it, Martin. And they'll come into the kitchen and get me. And I have to tell them, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. no. The first lady of the United States did that. Don't worry about that. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, oh, you don't, you didn't, you didn't read the thing. The, there's a placard up on the wall um, about the, yeah, the first lady used to smoke. She would go out onto the brand new balcony, the Truman balcony. And she told the New York Times herself, um, I did a devilish thing. When I would come back into the yellow oval living room, I would take one of my butts and put it into an angel's hands on a vase. And I would, I would put them in there. And, and if you had to live with Richard Nixon's aseptic furniture that he left behind, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars with brand new furniture, and there was pretty much no way that Jerry and I were going to get brand new furniture. So not after all of that expense that they had authorized. So, And Betty often would march in now for you young ladies today and ERA. She was at the front of those marches and people were aghast. Her girlfriends would even pull her aside and say, how can you even be out there marching with all of those women? I mean, honestly, Betty, it's so inappropriate. And she really did not care, guys. And Sheila Rab Weidenfeld will see the cigarette butt one day and mentions it to the First Lady. There is a cigarette butt in that angel's hands over there, First Lady. I put that there every day to see if these housekeepers have noticed it. It's amazing that you saw it, Sheila. It's very interesting. Yes, she said, oh, yes, ma'am, you're putting that there every day. Um, do they know about it? Well, no, of course they don't know about it. I'm waiting to see if they see it, okay, if, if they notice it. Um, yes, so somebody might have tipped off the housekeepers on our staff. Remember, I was a butler, a housekeeper, a chef, also a bartender, and a military aide, okay? So somebody might have tipped off um, amongst my friends that, uh, you know, the first ladies targeting you guys upstairs, you might wanna, there's a, yeah, okay. So that doesn't last forever, she's not doing that forever. This is well published in books like The Residence and Betty herself mentioned this in a huge article, beautiful in the New York Times, that she did this. Often people have wondered, you know, well I wonder why she smoked and drank and took pills because she did have a pills addiction also, okay? And if you are receiving over 100 letters per week attacking you and the president for the filth of your Christian behavior, and many of the letters, guys, um, there's only so many that can be read, okay, therapeutically by Betty, and there's many of them that have to, that one has to go to the service. Send that, that, that one's threatening, that's actually threatening bodily harm, that goes to the, and yes, this is a huge problem. What are the letters so angry about with Betty? Why is she drinking, okay? Um, the letters that are coming in, people are very, very, very pissed off that they are sleeping in bed together. Can you believe the gall and audacity? And Betty inflames the situation and says, you know, well, I think that's very popular for husbands and wives to sleep together. There's billions of us on this planet. And why don't we issue a formal response to that to the press? Um, have this, this typed up. It's just going to be one sentence. And people in the press get the official response. Okay, so this is on the First Lady's letterhead. It says, with well, just one sentence, is the president supposed to be a eunuch? question mark. That is her official response, okay? And she says, this is not the Dick Van Dyke show. 
We are not going to go back to having the separate bedrooms and uh-uh. Okay, I don't think we're doing anything that's filthy within Christianity or anything like that, okay? This is just normal behavior between adults, okay? And we're married and in love with each other, so. Also, the letters mention things like, this is a fake president. Not a single person ever voted for this man to become president of the United States. And within history, a lot of our students today are wondering how is it possible for a person to become president of the United States and never have been voted in, okay? Don't forget the vice president was offered to either resign, Spiro Agnew, or to be arrested, okay? So he is already gone and that's how Jerry came in to become the vice president. And you armchair historians out there uh, who are wondering how this is possible, especially all of our young friends and colleagues, um, this is some fascinating stuff to look up. Now, I do want to mention, bear in mind that Betty knows that she is a drunk and has a problem. And she will later on say in speeches up on stage that I, I cleaned myself up. Um, I had a family intervention in the, the living room one day. It was about a year after Jerry and I left office. I said weird things like, how am I a drunk? I never fell down, stumbled, or said anything inappropriate on stage. Not even once, okay? Um, and also, I never finished a whole bottle by myself. So how do I have a problem? And she does actually invent and becomes the first CEO of a wonderful thing on earth. It is called the Betty Ford Clinic, and it is going super strong these days. Do you know that it is the Hazelden Betty Ford Clinics all across the United States. And if you have a challenge in life or a problem, um, if it's opioid addiction or drugs or drinking or sex or whatever it is, if you're a rock star, a politician, a musician or an actor, um, you have a place to go now. And uh, uh, the public is quite accepting. You know, if you just honestly say, I've been having some problems, I may have an addiction, I'm putting myself, I've, I'm going to the Hazelden Betty Ford Clinic. So be thankful for Betty Ford that she had the strength to do this and to come out and to help people and to put herself into rehabilitative therapy. And she does restore and clean up her entire life. So um, be thankful for her. Thank you for joining us in celebrating a wonderful Shiro Betty Ford here on Inside the President's Cabinet.